So I've travelled to Colne today in Lancashire. I'm at ELE Advanced Technologies. I'm with David Dudley uh, here. The business has recently invested um, a substantial sum uh, in Eurospark's Joe Mars EDM solutions. Um, David, firstly, tell us what the, the problems were that you were encountering, which you led you down this path to invest in three EDM machines from Eurospark. So we are set up in manufacturing cells to manufacture uh, turbine components, blades, vanes and seal segments. And as our product portfolio has expanded and the geometry has become more complex, uh, we found that EDM was becoming a bottleneck. So what we wanted to do is to invest in some additional uh, capacity. And when we entered into discussions with Eurospark, we uh, found that uh, purchasing machines with additional amps and additional tank size meant that we could uh, machine product more uh, efficiently. So what's going through this cell here? What are you actually doing? So going through this cell at the moment are industrial gas turbine parts. So some of the larger engines that are out in the field for the OEMs, uh, very complex geometry, very precision uh, features. And there are a number of slots, seal segments, and also the tip cavities type work. And the reason they're, they're, they're sparked is because you couldn't machine these then, no? And, and if that is the case, why couldn't you machine some of these? The, the geometries are very complex. There's some internal uh, male features that uh, aren't machinable using other processes. Is it also to do with heat as well, though? Because some of the materials that we're talking about here, um, you, you don't want to be affecting any of the properties because that would obviously uh, affect the outcome of the finished component. Yeah, so the materials that we're machining are mnemonic based alloys. Uh, so we do do grinding and milling and all those kind of things, but the features that we're machining on the EDM are impossible to, to machine using, using those processes. Uh, the, the, the good thing about these machines, although they've got high hamps, uh, the, the fuzzy logic part of the EDM controls means that it gives a good surface finish and a good metallurgy at the end of it. So all the parts are cut up uh, initially to verify the, the metallurgy of the component and these parts pass with flying colours. And the increased ampage though, how much faster are you now producing components? You know, have you removed that bottleneck? At the moment, we're, we're producing parts 30% faster through these machines and we expect, expect that to uh, grow further. And on the hardware itself, David, you also mentioned to me there's some areas that you really liked. For example, the, the depth of the tank. Can you elaborate on some of the areas that really stood out to you? So, so the beauty of these machines are we, we specified the 75 amp, amp machine uh, with a a specific size component however the depth of the machine uh, was limited on the standard size and what uh, Eurospark did for us they increased the depth of the tank to allow us to machine bigger components without us having to go up to the next spec machine so we, we've increased our uh, size capacity by using a standard machine and modifying the, the tank size. Now looking around your machine shop you've got a lot of EDM machines here a lot of different brands as well I and mean, how did Eurospark uh, fare on price and the success of the installation in general. You've got a lot to compare to. Yeah, so we, when we went was in the marketplace to buy some new EDMs, we engaged with a number of uh, EDM suppliers and from value for money, the Eurospark stood out because we did some uh, cycle time analysis and it was comparable with much more expensive machines. Uh, the controls themselves are similar controls to what we're working with today. So there's, there's a lot less learner curve for us. So when these machines were delivered during the pandemic, uh, the machines were installed, commissioned and they hit the ground running and they're now producing components in a very difficult uh, environment. Well, when I, final question for me David, when I look at the component here, you're having to move it uh, to do different um, cycles, would it not be advantageous to have like a fourth axis unit on here or something like that to, to be able to keep it all into almost one operation? Well, what we do, because we've got multiple setups, what we try and do is balance the cycle times of the machine, so whilst the four axis uh, would, would help with some of the uh, features that are in opposite planes. We've got uh, a dedicated Aurora system that allows us to do quick changeovers to uh, spark in different attitudes. So we can spark in X, Y and, and Z on these machines. Looking back now, we, we, we've gone through this pandemic. You've, you've placed the order in January. You weren't aware of what was coming around the corner. Was it still the right choice to make? It was definitely the right choice to make because, like I said earlier, the, these machines have got installed and commissioned a few weeks ago, and now they're producing components and helping us to uh, produce additional volume through the shop.